Now we will talk about a statement of law of reciprocal proportions. What will be law of reciprocal proportion? If two different elements combine separately with the same weight of a third element, the ratio of the masses in which they do so are either the same or a simple multiple of the mass ratio in which they combine. So that's referred to as law of reciprocal proportion. So for example, oxygen and sulfur reacts with copper to give copper oxide and copper sulfide. So you got copper which mixed with oxygen and copper mixed with sulfide. Now we'll talk about Gay-Lussac's law. Gay-Lussac's law states that the volume of gases undergoing a reaction at constant pressure and temperature are in a simple ratio to each other and to that of the product. That's referred to as Gay-Lussac law. You can see my hydrogen and oxygen mixed up to give water and there is a simple ratio between each other. So if the temperature increases, automatically the pressure is increased. Now we are looking into Gay-Lussac's law. You are able to see the air molecules is really huge in a container and if the temperature is increases automatically the heat from the flame will cause the temperature within the can increases it increase the molecules pressure inside the can so obviously the pressure of the pressure so the rise in temperature will cause the pressure within the can to increase so if the temperature is reduced automatically the pressure inside the can will automatically get reduced so this is referred to as Gay-Lussac law when the heat source is removed the temperature in the can decreases and the temperature and the pressure inside the inside the can get reduced. So this is how the Gay-Lussac law is. So if the pressure and the temperature it's inversely proportional. You can see the pressure here it's inversely proportional to the temperature and if this is one medium, this is one medium P1 and temperature T1 and P2 and temperature T2. So again Lussac law is P1 divided by T1 is equal to P2 divided by T2. And the formula can be derived as the pressure is equal to K as a constant value into density into temperature divided by molecular weight. Now we'll talk about a Dalton's theory. What would be Dalton's theory? All matter is made up of atoms. The atoms are indestructible and its combination of two or more atom will form a compounds. Here you are able to see Thomson model in which all atoms are made up of electrons. And in Rutherford model you will be having a center nuclei and you will be having electrons. Whereas Bohr model told like we got lot of orbitals in it. And each atom is having an energy that's quantum energy. It's given by quantum model. If we talk about modern atomic theory, current theoretical model of atom involves a dense nucleus surrounded by a probabilistic cloud of electrons. You can see here. 
Atomic theory is a scientific theory of nature of matter and it states that matter is composed of discrete units called atoms. Now we'll talk about molarity. Molarity is nothing but the molar concentration. It indicates the concentration of a solute in a solution. Any chemical species in terms of amount of substance is given in a given volume is the molarity is equal to moles of solute divided by liters of solution. We can see we got three glasses in which different liquids are placed. I got a cube of one meter length, width and height. So one meter cubic meter is equal to thousand liters and one liter is equal to thousand milli ml. That's thousand centimeter cube. So this is how you'll be defining the units of cubic meter. So cubic meter is equal to thousand density meter cube or it's thousand liters. Now we are looking into moles in solution. You can see 58 gram of salt is there. 58 gram of salt is there. 58 gram of salt in 75 gram of milli of water, and the salt is sodium chloride. And you got 200 ml here and 500 ml of water here. So once it is dissolved, this one will have more concentration. 58 gram in 75 ml will have more concentration of salt when compared to 58 gram in 200 ml and 58 gram in 500 ml. So it's 58 gram per 75 ml, 58 gram per 200 ml and 58 gram per 500 ml. So this indicates this particular object will have more concentration that's having more salty when compared to this one which is in the form of diluted. So 58 gram in 75 ml can be denoted as 58 gram 75 ml power minus 1. So this can be indicated as 58 gram divided by 75 ml you got 0.77 gram in 1 ml. Here it's 0.29 gram in 1 ml and here it's 0.12 gram in 1 ml. This is the concentration of the salt or solute in the liquid. This is referred to as molality.